the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Long, long ago, the town of Hamelin in Germany was suddenly overrun by thousands of rats. They fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradles and eat the cheese out of the bags and licked the soap from the cook's own ladles, made the nests inside men's Sunday hats and even spoiled women's chats by drowning, thus picking, with shirking and squeaking in 50 different shops and flats. The people of Hamlin were not prepared to sit quietly by while the rats gobbled the food off their tables. They chased them out of their houses with brushes and brooms and pokers and pails. But the rats just whisked their tails and scurried back in again. Soon every scrap of food had vanished. The people gathered outside the town hall and demanded that the mayor do something about ridding the town of these vermin. Their angry shouts quite frightened the mayor. He came out on the steps and said in a shaky voice, Uh, As mayor of this historic town, I declare that it is a great pity that our law-abiding citizens are troubled by rats. But the people weren't satisfied by these words. They wanted action, and this was just what the mayor couldn't afford. Instead, he held the bag of gold up in his hand and promised to give it as a reward to anyone who could clear the town of the rats. Suddenly, a voice was heard above the noise in the square. I'll rid your town of rats, it called. Everyone stopped shouting and turned around to see who was speaking. A stranger stood there. He was barefooted and wore a tunic of yellow and red and a high-pointed hat with a long feather in it. Around his neck hung a pipe. His name, he told them, was Pied Piper. The people all laughed at him because he looked so strange. But he paid no attention to them. If I can rid your town of all the rats, will you give me the gold? He asked. Uh, Of course. So the Pied Piper stepped back and put his pipe to his mouth. He puffed out his cheeks and blew a long silvery note. And then another. And all three shrill notes the pipe uttered. You heard as if an army muttered. And the muttering grilled to a mighty trembling, and out of the houses the rats came trembling. Great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, gray rats, trawny rats. Fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, families by the tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, followed the piper for their lives. The mayor himself helped to pull wide the huge town gate. And out the flood of rats poured into the open countryside, with the piper at their head still playing. At length, they reached a distant valley, where the largest Swiss cheese they had ever seen stood waiting for them. With one upcord, they ran up to it, and in its thousand holes, till the tail of the last rat had disappeared in sight. Then the holes in the cheese closed up, and it slowly faded away until it was no more. Then a golden mist remained. The piper hurried gaily back to the town of Hamlin to collect his reward. The people were still crowding the city walls, and when they caught sight of the piper returning, they cheered him loudly. It was only the mayor who frowned. Why should I give this barefooted wanderer a bag of gold? He grumbled. Why? All he has done is pipe a tune and go for a walk in the country. So instead of the money bag he had promised, he tossed the piper just one gold coin. The people were as mean as the mayor and did not want their gold to go to a stranger, quickly forgot the service the piper had done. All you did was play a tune. Hum, not worth it! They shouted. The piper began to frown. How dishonest and ungrateful they are, and their children will grow up to be the same. 
I can save them from that. Hmm. Once more he stepped to the town gate. Once more he raised the pipe to his lips and blew three notes of great sweetness. The people stopped jeering and watched in troubled silence. The piper's tune became gay and joyful. He began to dance up and down as if he was giving an invitation to all the children of the town to come out and join him. Then all the doors of the town popped open and out the children of Hamlin came running. Children of all ages, even little ones scarcely able to toddle, tumbled into the streets. The sound of the piper's sweet and merry tune. They began to dance towards the town gate, skipping and turning as they went. The gate opened in front of them, and hands linked in a long chain, they skipped out into the country. They followed the piper down the road, never once looking back at the town of Hamlin. With him, they danced over hills and far away to a new land where people were kind and generous and always kept their promises. 